want you all to close your eyes. Now imagine you're sat on a sliding seat in a rowing boat that's no bigger than the size of a car. You're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, rocking from side to side, listening to the rhythm of the oars like the heartbeat of the boat. You're wet through from a recent wave. You're exhausted, I mean no wonder. You've been rowing 12 to 14 hours a day for the past two weeks. Every stroke feels like a battle with your body, but you don't stop because you still have 2,000 more miles to row. The very thought of this makes you want to go to sleep, but when you next open up your eyes, you see this. The ocean is a steely blue. The sky stretches out before you, split between the orangey hues of day in the west and the deeper blues of moonrise in the east. A school of dolphins happily play to your left, and whales pass directly underneath you. Tuna, marlin, and turtles are also frequent visitors. You get a goodnight kiss from a flying fish right in your left eye, <laughs> but it helps to fend off the hallucinations as you force your sleep-deprived body to just keep rowing. At night, lit by nothing but the moon, the water shimmers with phosphorescence, which looks like a thousand stars rushing past the hull, and you suddenly realize you are one of the luckiest people alive. The raw beauty of this place. And then you notice something floating just a few meters away from your boat. A plastic bottle. You feel a mixture of sadness and incredulity. Here you were, in one of the remotest places on Earth, and yet here was an object which had been used for no more than 12 minutes on land, passively bobbing thousands of miles offshore. That sight, that plastic, that's why we formed Row for the Ocean two years beforehand. Myself, a climate scientist, Roz, a physiotherapist, Kirsty, a landscape architect, and Laura, a social media manager, all decided to enter a transatlantic rowing race. Now, we'd all done some rowing before, but nothing quite like this. We wanted a challenge. We wanted to take our rowing to the next level. We wanted an adventure. But most importantly, we wanted to raise awareness of the damaging effect of plastics on our oceans. So we thought, what better way to do this than by actually rowing an ocean and then telling people about it? So after a full two years of training, we packed up our little boat with supplies and set off from Lagomera in the Canary Islands. We were just one of 28 different teams representing 11 different countries, all motivated by different reasons to row 3,000 miles to the Caribbean. Now, we all soon found out that humans aren't really built to row an ocean. We experienced pain in places we didn't know existed. <laughs> For instance, our ankles. Who would have thought that when you row an ocean, you get painful ankles? We got nappy rash. We got constipation, we got seasickness, our bums hurt, our hands hurt, our backs hurt, everything hurt. We missed our friends and families. We missed cheese. <laughs> we really did. <laughs> For six weeks, we were aliens in this strange place. We rode in shifts, two hours on and two hours off, or sometimes three hours on and only one hour off, but we never slept for more than one and a half hours in a stretch for the entire crossing. We slept in coffin-sized cabins where temperatures reached up to 40 degrees in the heat of the day. We battled 40-foot waves, tropical rainstorms, and when there was no wind at all, it felt like rowing our one-ton boat through cement 
One time, we even had to row for nine hours continuously with one arm to stop ourselves from drifting backwards. The only contact we had was a quick two-minute phone conversation with friends or family, or a brief chat with our weather router, that's the person who sets our course. But apart from that, we would see sometimes a freight ship steaming from South America or a plane far above, but it was just the four of us a vast expanse of ocean, lots of amazing wildlife, and plastic, more plastic than wildlife. Every day, we saw bags, buckets, bottles, fishing gear, stuff caught up in seaweed, despite the fact that we were thousands of miles offshore. What's worse is that we knew the stuff which we were seeing, the stuff bobbing on the surface, actually only makes up 1%, 1% of what's really in the ocean. The rest is either too small to see, or it's already been eaten by marine life, so it's already in the food chain. You only need to look at recent news headlines to see evidence of this. Just three weeks ago, a dead whale washed up in the Philippines with 40 kilograms of plastic in its stomach. And another recent study has found 100% of human stools have microplastic in, proving this isn't just affecting wildlife in the remotest of places. This is affecting all of us, all of us. This is a truly global issue. At first, we wanted to use our row as a way to raise money for Surfers Against Sewage, a fantastic charity which is focusing its efforts on tackling plastic pollution in the UK. We also wanted to use it as a platform to raise awareness of the damaging effect of plastic on our coastlines and oceans. But we soon realized we could do more than this. Now, I'm not talking about solving the world's plastic pollution in one fell swoop. An ocean wasn't rowed in a day, after all but we could at least start in the place where we came from by making a positive, lasting impact. An impact which would continue way beyond the time that it took us to row an ocean. And for that, we would need the help from local volunteers to inspire change in our community. So we gathered a willing group of people from across the city who shared our vision to reduce the amount of plastic we use. We offered companies publicity for supporting us in an international race, as well as an opportunity to be at the heart of a campaign to make their city single-use plastic-free. Suddenly, people from all across Exeter were supporting not only our row, but our plastic-free vision too. As a result, two major employers, almost 40 businesses, Numerous community groups and schools have committed to removing single-use plastic from their workplaces. We found that getting a community to take responsibility for its plastic consumption is not just good for the environment. It brings people together, too. Hundreds of people have come to our river and beach cleans. Our row took us six weeks. Or 43 days, two hours, and 20 minutes, to be precise. And at 10 a.m. on January the 24th, 2019, we were the first all-female team to cross the finish line in Antigua. Thank you. Winning the race was one of the most unforgettable experiences of my life. But I also won't forget crossing that finish line with three other incredible women. Together, we had rowed an ocean and rallied our community around a plastic-free vision. Yes, Exeter is just one community but it's one of many more. Thanks to the collective actions of thousands of individuals,
Communities all over the world are taking responsibility and going single-use plastic-free. Six weeks at sea, just the four of us, made me realize we're all capable of achieving extraordinary things. If we share a vision, ask each other for help, we can all put in place the changes that we would like to see in our own communities. Just like rowing an ocean, it will take us all many millions of small strokes to end plastic pollution. But we can do so together, one stroke at a time. Thank you.